Bit of an impromptu video here, but sometimes the best videos come from being impromptu videos, don't they? Although this one will be a little bit lower effort, so I do apologise for that, I am working on some bigger projects as we speak. However, I was looking through some of my older tweets, and I found one, and I realised I never really read through the responses, I posted the tweets, and I sort of left things and never really looked back at it. But with the recent release of the Ragnarok DLC for the latest Assassin's Creed game, it sort of re-entered my brain the question of why do old fans continue to play these games? Why do old fans with the same mindset as me, for the most part, continue to put money, time and effort into a franchise that really doesn't respect you anymore. The thing that prompted this originally was in a video from Access the Animus. In a video they made advertising the dawn of Ragnarok DLC in early February, I noticed this moment where the guy narrating over the gameplay gave a deep sigh over one of the new implementations in the gameplay of the TLC. The new skills, the new electrical abilities. And it made me realize I used to use Access the Animus way back when I was 14, 15, 16 for information about the newest Assassin's Creed games. These guys have been doing this for a very long time and I know they've been into this franchise since way back in the day, same as I was. So it begged the question, why do they continue to play this? Clearly they're not happy with the direction, clearly they can see what happened and it made me wonder, it made me want to ask that question, just pose it in general, why if you're a fan of the old Assassin's Creed games, do you continue to play these new ones? It baffles me. Now obviously everyone knows I continued to play a lot of these games, you know, I could have dipped out at any point when Unity was terrible, when Syndicate was boring, when Origins went in a new direction, when Odyssey broke me. <laughs> but I didn't, I kept going. Now obviously part of that really is the money aspect of it, I built my audience off of Assassin's Creed and as much as I can make a ton of really big projects and they do really well, Assassin's Creed is the most easy way for me to make money, that's just a fact. Obviously, the only reason I decided to take a step back, stop following these new games, even just for laughs, was because of the entire sexual abuse scandal. I just couldn't have anything to do with it anymore. Fuck that company, I'm not buying another product. And I'm still of that mindset. But then how does it work for people that feel the same way I do about these games, but they don't run a YouTube channel where they make money off the back of it. They just literally do this for fun. What keeps them around? It was an interesting thought, and so I put out the tweet hoping to get some responses, to get some insight, and I wanted to kind of go over what I got today. There were, of course, a couple of responses that either answered the wrong question or came from people that I wasn't even aiming the question at to begin with. If you like these new games, I'm not talking to you. You obviously play them because you like them. That's self-explanatory. That's totally cool. But I'm I'm wondering why the people who don't like them continue to play them. Because I didn't like them, I continued to play them, and it was mainly because it made money, and it was a bit funny to sit on stream and get mad about something that didn't really matter. But when you're sitting in your room on your own, and you're spending your money on it, you're not getting anything back, why do you continue to play them? Now I'll read the two tweets I picked that really stood out to me as actual answers with substance to them that I could sort of understand, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. Assassin's Creed means a lot to me, it has been a huge part of my life since 2007, so at this point it's very hard for me to stop buying the games. I am definitely not a fan of the recent games and the move to the RPG genre, but it's something I put up with to once again dive into the AC universe. I think it's because I've just invested so much time into the series and this world that it's just hard to sever that connection. I hate the new formula, but at the same time, no other series gives me the same feeling Assassin's Creed does, even in its current form. If there was something to move on to, I would, but I can't get into anything else in the same way. Plus, with limited time to play games, I can't experiment with everything, so it's easier to stay with something familiar. 
Big thank you for the responses, by the way. I never said beforehand I was going to make these into a video or whatever, but I want to say I do appreciate you for leaving your responses, for giving me some insights. I'm not here trying to make fun of you or criticize the way that you're thinking. Just thought it would be a nice topic to go over some insight that I got from you in the response to my tweet. Now, both of these have the same sentiment. The sentiment being, I grew up with it, I have a huge history with it, I have a connection to it. And although I don't like these games, I f literally do not enjoy them. I play them anyway, because there's a familiarity. As a concept, that's really strange to me, because I feel like that's the precise reason it's so easy for me not to play these games. What is the reason I don't like them? It's because they're not the games I want to play. When you're looking at the reason why old school Assassin's Creed fans no longer like these newer games, the reason comes from the fact that they're not doing anything that actually got us into these games in the first place. I got into these games with the very first one in the franchise. So comparing that to Valhalla, it doesn't actually do anything that that first game did. I mean, on a service level, of course, they added social stealth, kind of. There is climbing, you can wear a hood, there is a hidden play, but you know what I mean. These newer Assassin's Creed games don't actually do anything that AC1 did. So why would I play them? Just because it has the same name on it? It begs the question, if Assassin's Creed Valhalla wasn't called Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and it was just called Valhalla, for example, would these people still be playing it? I don't think they would, because it doesn't actually appeal to them. Which means they literally are playing it for blind brand loyalty, which is just really strange to me. They, of course, meaning just old school Assassin's Creed fans that aren't me. Not the two tweets that I used, I'm not trying to single anybody out here. Because if you actually liked the games, then it would be a simple answer. The question I posed doesn't apply to you. But if the question I posed does apply to you, you're an old school AC fan that doesn't like these new games but continues to play them, what reason is there for that? I mean, the only logical conclusion is because it's called Assassin's Creed and you feel some sense of obligation to play the newest entry, despite not even liking it which is just crazy to me. And I guess there's no actual conclusion I want to make with this video necessarily. I'm not trying to call anybody out. I'm not trying to make a criticism or anything like that. It was just a question that I had and I thought it was interesting to talk about and explore that and see what people had to say. I think for the most part, people like me don't play these games. And if they do, it's because they run a business off the back of it. You look at someone like Jorat, I mean, actually Jorat really likes these games. But when you look at someone like Access the Animus, which is exactly what prompted this tweet in the first place, what they've built is obviously important to them and the entire branding revolves around Assassin's Creed. I don't think I'm confused as to why these sorts of people continue to play these games and cover these games. There's a creative aspect to it and having your voice heard even if the games themselves you don't actually like. Even if I don't relate directly to that anymore, I definitely did in the past. But I guess the question of why do regular people continue to play these games when ultimately they don't like them, I guess it comes down to having a deep investment in something that you used to really, really love. And tearing yourself away from that can be very difficult, especially when the thing is very familiar to you, and especially when it's so reoccurring like Assassin's Creed. You look back to 2007, there's really not been a year when you couldn't have sank your teeth into something Assassin's Creed related. It's something that's reoccurring, it's something that's consistent, and it's something that's always been there. It's not like a GTA where a new one comes out every five to ten years. You can't get so invested in that that it literally becomes a personality trait. Whereas something like Assassin's Creed or Call of Duty easily can. You find a lot of Call of Duty players find it very difficult to jump into another FPS despite saying that Call of Duty is long dead. It's because they're familiar with it, it's because they grew up with it, it's because it used to be something very special to them. So I guess on that level, I can understand it, even if I'm past that at this point, which I have to say, as someone who used to be into everything Assassin's Creed, used to wish that the games would get better, it feels amazing to no longer give a shit. When I look at Dawn of Ragnarok, it's funny for sure. I can definitely sit here and be like, that's funny. And I can make criticisms, and I can make fun of it, and that's a bit of fun, but the fact that I don't actually care, it's so liberating. 
I would recommend anybody freeing yourself from it. I'm not going to lie. And I think on top of that, Ubisoft have managed to bring mobile game products to mainstream audiences on modern consoles. They're a AAA studio creating bloated, grindy, and overly monetized products and charging $70 for them. It's not just that Assassin's Creed isn't Assassin's Creed, it's that Ubisoft are kind of harming the industry in a major way. They show no signs of slowing down, of pulling back, or of changing direction. They're leaning into NFTs, they're starting to remove tight, engaging, finite experiences in favor of monetizing them further with live service models. This company to me thinks we're all idiots. It thinks video game audiences are now nothing but numbers, mindless players who will eat up anything they throw at us. They do nothing but contribute to diluting the industry, tearing down creativity, and I've been watching it happen for years, and it just got to a point where I needed to get out of there. I just hope that people can join me in taking themselves somewhere new. Remember what you loved, always do, cherish that for sure, but buying into new Ubisoft products is forever futile. You're perpetuating a system that wants to take advantage of you. I think it's just something worth keeping in mind. I guess I don't really know what the exact point of this video was, I just thought it was an interesting topic to talk about and delve into. I appreciate all of the responses from people on my tweet because it was really insightful, especially to get clarity that actually a lot of people like me don't play these games. It's a lot less than I guess I thought it was, of people sticking with this franchise despite actually hating everything. And I guess this is quite topical, as Gene Park, someone major in the games industry, actually is somewhat on the same page as people like me, pointing out that Assassin's Creed has really, really fallen far from where it used to be, and I think it's interesting to see someone major in the games industry that doesn't normally talk about this stuff, talking about this stuff. I guess I thought I'd weigh in. Subconsciously, I didn't actively think about this. I just decided to turn on the mic and start talking. Let me know if this is something you'd be interested in more of. I don't really know what this video is, but we'll see. Maybe it won't even come out, but it probably will. I'm trying to be a bit more lax with what I put on the channel these days, so if I think of something and I want to talk about something, why not make it a video? It doesn't really matter, does it? Although I am working on some projects, I am doing a lot more streaming over on Twitch in the times between uploads, so if you want to follow me on Twitch, definitely do. I'm going to be starting up my AC1 speedrunning soon to take back my title, so definitely tune in for that when I do do it in April, I think it'll be. Um, but for now, I'm playing through Elden Ring and doing some other bits, so it's worth giving me a follow over on Twitch if you haven't already, because I'd appreciate it. Follow me on social media, that's where I am the most active, especially on Twitter.com. I don't blame you if you're not on Twitter, though. It's the worst website on the planet I just can no longer escape. And as well, don't forget to join the Four Pillars Discord. The link is in the description. You can join, talk to me, the other pillars, Fishy, Tynamite, and Long-Eared Fox, and have a swell bloody time. Anyway, that's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, although I have to say I don't read a lot of comments on Assassin's Creed videos these days because they can get incredibly toxic, and it's just really not good for my mental health, I'm going to be honest with you. And so I try to just stay away from it once I post an Assassin's Creed video, which although that does suck, it's a lot better for me mentally. I feel a lot happier in myself, so there is that. That said, I'm sure I will delve in and read some, as I have just asked you to leave a comment so i'll do my very very best to brave it for you guys <laughs> anyway that's it from me and i'll see you all very soon for a shadow of war video and my big horizon forbidden west video thank you all take care i'll see you soon bye bye